One-on-ones are the primary way to build trust in relationships that work. A one-on-one -on -one is a meeting for the two people involved to focus only on each other. This is a golden opportunity to provide feedback, talk about career growth, or discuss issues on the team. But I found that most people are not using one-on-ones effectively. Since everyone should be having a recurring one-on-one -on -one with a direct manager, that's what I'll focus on in this video. By the way, if you're not having a regular conversation with your manager, you're probably doing it wrong. If your company or manager can't give you the time of day to have these discussions to help you get better, you're not being valued properly. And I'd recommend you ask why or just start looking for a new job. Beyond giving and getting feedback, one-on-ones are key to building trust in your work relationship. I talked about in a previous video, becoming a tech lead and how you need strong relationships in addition to having a large enough scope to justify getting to a senior or staff level. Having regular one-on-one -on -one meetings are key to building those strong relationships. In my career, I've had hundreds of one-on-ones with my managers across the companies I've worked at, and I've also been a manager in these meetings when I took on the TLM or tech lead manager role at Facebook. Here are three things I wish I knew earlier in my career about how to get the most benefit out of one-on-one -on -one meetings. Overall, I think engineers are too passive, and there's a really powerful perspective that I learned about making one-on-ones deliberately awkward that we'll talk about. An article I read by a Facebook vice president named Mark Rabkin is titled, The Art of the Awkward One-on-One, -on -one, and it completely changed how I view one-on-ones. The idea is that one-on-ones are the most inefficient way to communicate non-controversial information. As a result, the best way to use a one-on-one -on -one is to embrace awkward topics, since that's where you'll really get the most growth and the most change. When I started to embrace the fact that most of my one-on-ones will be uncomfortable, I felt like I immediately started to see benefits in these conversations I was having. Examples of awkward one-on-ones include talking about how you might be close to burnout and you just feel really disengaged, or how you don't really agree with the feedback that you received from your coworker or from your manager in a previous performance review. But it can also be used for positive examples. Your manager might have said, you know, great job in passing to you last week, and that turned out to be the highlight of your week. And so that's a good example of, it might be a little awkward to share that, but it really does go a long way in creating vulnerability and opportunity for growth. So in the article, Mark Rabkin talks about two rules for awkward one-on-ones. First, don't talk about any topic which could be discussed in the open. If someone can overhear your conversation and not cringe, you shouldn't talk about it in a one-on-one. -on -one. So status updates or generic compliments are much better done in a team meeting or in an email, but not in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Second, each person should commit to saying at least one awkward thing in each conversation. And if you call out that you're doing this and you tell your manager, I want to go and be a little bit more vulnerable, more uncomfortable in these one-on-one -on -one meetings, it becomes easier to do and a little bit more natural. If you follow these rules, you'll naturally start to talk about things like emotions, feedback and mistakes that you've made or that you've observed other people make. And it will be difficult, it will be uncomfortable, but that will really transform your growth and it'll actually help the cohesion of the whole team because people will feel much more comfortable talking about these difficult things. By the way, if you're interested in a live event and Q&A where we talk about effective one-on-ones in more detail, join me and Alex on February 22nd as part of the next session for the Tech Career Growth Community. The idea of tech career growth is to empower you to advance your career in tech faster. I'll leave links for you to join us in the description. I hope you'll be there. Generally, one-on-one -on -one meetings are weekly and they can be between 20 minutes to an hour long. And because they happen at a regular cadence, it's easy for one-on-ones to devolve into talking about what you did last week and what you're planning on doing this week. Instead, as we just talked about, the one-on-one -on -one should really be used to talk about higher level objectives and feedback. It's helpful to refer back to some longer term criteria or goal that you might have set at the beginning of the half or the quarter. For example, if direction setting is one of the growth areas in your previous performance review, you can talk about how your ownership in the current project demonstrates your ability to set direction in a way that you weren't able to showcase before. And you can ask for feedback about what else you could be doing. So here are two tactics I've used as a way to quickly get to a deeper level of conversation beyond just a status update. First, think about the highlight and low light of the week. This question forces reflection about what you did along with it makes you think about what you enjoyed and didn't enjoy doing um, in the work you, you had. 
And that personal opinion, that layer of emotion on top of the work, that is key to the vulnerability that makes one-on-ones so much more effective. Behavior change can only happen when you're able to share how you truly feel and get feedback on that. So you need to go beyond a description of what you've, what you've done in the week. A second tactic to have deeper conversation is to make an observation and then use tentative language to share how you feel about that. For example, you might say, I've noticed that the majority of the team consistently shows up late to our team meetings. And I wonder if that could be an indication that they don't really value the time we're spending as a team together. What do you think? When you share that kind of observation, and it's really for the benefit of the whole team, in addition to your own benefit, um, you're able to start thinking about if other people agree, your manager might agree or disagree, and you can actually start thinking about what solutions are there. And that really is the difference between a junior and senior engineer, being able to make those observations and coming up with ways to remedy the issue. Another mistake I see very commonly in one-on-ones is that there's no system to track the discussion over time. It's not enough to have a couple topics in your head as you walk into the one-on-one. You have to write them down consistently in a shared place that both you and your manager have access to. There are, I'm sure, some fancy tools available to help you with this, but my default is a running Google Doc where I write down the date of the meeting, the main points we discussed, and the action items for each person. I'll also proactively add some topics for an upcoming meeting so that we remember to discuss it in the next one-on-one. Having the shared system for both you and your manager has two important benefits. Number one, it shows that you're listening and you care about what happens in the one-on-one conversation. And not just for your career, but for pretty much everything in life. When you show that you care, other people start to care. Taking notes and following up on action items are two really tangible markers that you're taking your career growth seriously. That alone changes the perception about you being a passive participant in your career to now being proactive. And that immediately will help you with your career. One thing I've heard a lot is that my manager decides to frequently cancel our one-on-ones last minute, either because there's nothing to talk about or there might be some urgent fire to put out. And you know, if that happens more than once or twice in a quarter, it's not really a good thing. It's a red flag in my mind. And so having this doc, a running doc of what you've talked about, that's a really good way for you to signal to your manager that, hey, I do want this one-on-one to happen and I've actually put some thought into what we should talk about. The second benefit of a running one-on-one notes doc is that it shows progression over time. As humans, we have a really hard time remembering what we were doing months ago or how we felt months ago. By having a reliable way to track what you discussed, you can better recall achievements and understand how you grew and how you changed over time. And that becomes really valuable during performance review time. I also wanted to mention, I personally really enjoy walking one-on-ones where you are walking around the building or maybe outside as you do your one-on-one. And in fact, there is some science that links walking to higher levels of creativity and cognition. And some companies like Facebook have even designed their whole campus to have dedicated walkways for people to just walk and talk. If you visited Facebook during the day pre-COVID, you would see dozens of people walking along Hacker Square as part of their one-on-one. And the reason I bring this up is that if you're doing a walking one-on-one, of course, it's gonna be a little bit harder for you to take notes during the meeting. But you should still remember that after the one-on-one, you should come back to your computer and then write down the summary of what you talked about just so you have that record uh, week over week and you can track their progression over the course of a half. One-on-ones are a sacred time for you to work through higher level questions around your career growth, feedback, or other issues you might be having. I hope the advice here is helpful to increase the effectiveness of your one-on-ones, even if it makes you a little bit more uncomfortable. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see many of you at the live interactive session for tech career growth coming up soon. I'll see you in the next video.